Hello everybody and welcome back to more political chatter and we are covering breaking news here just a couple hours ago. Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida, has officially ended his campaign for president. Of course, Ron DeSantis um, came into the race as, uh, at, not really when he entered, but about this time a year ago actually, Ron DeSantis was really considered the favorite for this nomination. I mean, he um, was someone who got a lot of his support for uh, his margin of victory in 2022. While all of the Trump-endorsed candidates lost, Ron DeSantis won by 20% in Florida, which was unheard of at that point, winning by 20% as a Republican. Um, you know, in such a swing state like Florida, and he was heading into the 2024 election as probably when you looked at the numbers in Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, the early states, probably as the favorite for the nomination. And now we are at a point where he is behind Nikki Haley in national polling at 10.5%. Nikki Haley is at 11.5%, and he finished a very distant second into Iowa, and even though he said that he was happy with that performance and he did overperform, um, it didn't mean that he received any momentum in Iowa, or I'm sorry, in New Hampshire, in South Carolina, or really anywhere. When you overperform by 5% and you get 21% of the vote to Trump, so what did Trump win? 51%. It's not like you're going to gain any momentum. You have to come really close or beat Trump. So that prompted Ron DeSantis um, two days before the New Hampshire primary to, and six days after the Iowa caucuses, he waited some time after, or he, you know, he waited a little bit after Iowa, that prompted Ron DeSantis to post a video, four-minute video, um, to announce that he would drop out and endorse Trump. He endorses Trump. So, finally, you know, this was a very interesting race, or not interesting, based on how you look at it. You could say that this was a very interesting primary, or you could say that it is that it has been the least interesting um, in quite a while, because we, right before New Hampshire. We're approaching the New Hampshire primary, and there are only two candidates remaining. This is unheard of. I can't stress enough how this, uh, how unheard of this is. We are down to our final two. It is a Trump versus Haley race. I mean, if you go back to 2016, by the time of New Hampshire, let's just see how many um, uh, people were in the, you know, in the contest in New Hampshire. What is this? Oh, well, I don't want the candidate. Um, but I don't know if I could get it here. But there were, I mean, so many, um, um, uh, presidential candidates still in by New Hampshire. Let's just take a look here. I finally got it. I mean, there were six major candidates. Six, and this time we are down to two. I mean, and there are, I'm sure there are more, but um, yeah, Carly Fiorina was still in. Ben Carson was still in. Jim Gilmore was still in. So we had all of these candidates one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We had nine candidates, and Donald Trump was able to come out on top with 35% of the vote and crush everyone. The second place candidate was John Kasich with 15%. Don't know how he got second. But Trump was able to come through, you know, double the vote total of the second place candidate, and then that gave him the momentum heading into um, all of these other states. And that vote was decided, or it was split between 16 candidates. And now, in this day and age, we are at a two-person race between Haley and Trump. So then, the back in 2016, the 
the vote was splintered so, so much between those 16 candidates. And Donald Trump was able to win with only 35% of the vote. But this time around, um, Haley loses, which is probably a 97 or 8% chance of happening. Uh, not necessarily in New Hampshire, but across the country, the percentages, the chance is a bit higher in New Hampshire. But um, if Haley does somehow win, or uh, lose, sorry, if she does lose, it can't be blamed on vote splitting, on vote fracturing this time. I mean, you know, back in 2016, we had multiple, more than two candidates for the vast majority of the primary before, you know, Trump re uh, reached the minimum amount of delegates to win the nomination. But this time, only Iowa, which is incredible, only Iowa saw uh, more than two candidates in the race, which is definitely um, historic because um, this field, there weren't a whole bunch of candidates to begin with in this field because, you know, Trump announced that he would run um, first. But, but still, coming down to two candidates by New Hampshire is really something. And I don't know how long it'll be before Trump, uh, before there's only one candidate. Donald Trump, I mean, looking nationally, it's 66 to 11. Sure, we can talk about Nikki Haley's momentum, but just look at Nikki's, Nikki Haley's momentum over these months. It's not much. Donald Trump has had more momentum than, uh, you know, over these months than Nikki Haley has. And they don't talk about that. I mean, you know, she's betting it all in New Hampshire. And to be completely honest, if she doesn't win New Hampshire, then I think she drops out. I think, And I don't think that she wins New Hampshire. I mean, these averages, her being down 15 points exactly in New Hampshire, is not good. This is not a winnable race. Polls aren't this, um, far off, when you have so, so, so many polls, um, in this race, and especially when you have DeSantis at 6%, I mean, this is why DeSantis dropped out, by the way, we're talking about Haley versus Trump now, but, I mean, DeSantis was about to get 5% in New Hampshire, right, and then what are you going to do when you move on to South Carolina, Nikki Haley's home state, I mean, he's not going to get any votes here in South Carolina, and then he's absolutely done. So it was the smart move by him. But especially, it's over when you look at New Hampshire. I mean, especially when you consider the fact that Ron DeSantis is 6%, uh, 6 uh, at least 4% of that is going to go to Trump, and then you've got, you know, even more Trump votes, and then it becomes even harder for Nikki Haley to pull an upset, and um, it's just over. At this point, I mean, there is no path to victory for Nikki Haley. There is just not when you're down 15 in New Hampshire. And then you move on to South Carolina. Even if she were to win New Hampshire, South Carolina would still be such an uphill battle. Trump leads by 30%. So, such a um, large margin right now. For Trump in South Carolina. I mean, it is not even a contest here. Um, we haven't had much polling, though. So, again, and then DeSantis was doing kind of well. I mean, I shouldn't say well, but he was doing better than in New Hampshire here with 11%. So all that's going to go to Trump. So there's not like Nikki Haley has any sort of path to victory. And now, especially with Ron DeSantis out, it is officially over. I mean, Nikki Haley just has no shot at winning. So, this basically concludes the Republican primary. I mean, DeSantis at one time, seen as the favorite to win the nomination, is out. Definitely historic. This will be in history books, how to not run a presidential campaign. Thank you all for watching this video, and I hope to see you all next time.